Mike Schmidt, obviously what jumped out at us was the quote from um, Judge Ludig. Explain who he is and the significance of his comments. So Judge Ludig is a leading conservative uh, legal voice. He was someone who was considered by George W. Bush to be the chief justice of the Supreme Court. He was an appeals court judge. He is someone that people on the right look to on major legal issues of the day. It was significant that around the time of January 6th, he came out and said that there was nothing to the Eastman claims that Pence could essentially pick whatever president that he wanted or whatever, you know, they were cooking up and such. So what Ludig is saying is he's saying, look, the band is back together and it's coming to a state legislator near you. And that is a humongous problem. And that's what he's saying in that quote. He is saying, look, the fact that this is continuing, not only has the, the, the impact of undermining the election in 2024, but it erodes democracy altogether. And, uh, you know, Jackie, it's very much the sort of ideological underpinning behind Liz Cheney's conduct on the committee, that it's not just about looking backward and understanding how the U.S. Capitol became the site of a deadly insurrection. It's about preventing the destruction of our democracy moving forward. Um, how, how does that stay alive, if you will? And, and how is it that there's still only two Republicans interested in participating in that effort? Yeah, I, I think, Nicole, as we get closer to these public hearings and lawmakers on the January 6th committee investigating uh, the attack on the Capitol are owning and sharpening the central argument of this presentation that they're going to be giving, we are going to hear this point made exactly over and over again, that the insurrection happened, but it's still going on in various different forms uh, and has really taken hold of the entire Republican Party as a rationale for a lot of the legislative uh, changes potentially and, and proposals that we're going to see come out of this committee. Um, for example, something that has already get, garnered some bipartisan support are, are some changes to uh, the electoral vote count of um, 1887 and uh, something that has become a rallying cry for uh, these constitutional scholars at, like John Eastman, because, uh, you know, no matter how many people have dismantled Eastman's uh, constitutional theories. He does, at the end of the day, um, you know, know the law inside and out and is going to continue to argue in circles uh, around some of these things that he's continued to propagate until there are some actual uh, legislative remedies that are, uh, at least in the hopes of lawmakers serving on the panel, are ultimately passed as a result of their work. I mean, Charlie, he may know the law inside and out, but he's also accused of breaking the law, felony laws, by a federal judge who looked at um, his conduct and Donald Trump's and said it's more likely than not that Johnny Smith and Donald Trump um, committed felony criminal acts. Um, my question for you is, how is John Eastman, and he's in your state, you live in the state where it happened, how is he... Um, sort of lifted up still by this version of the Republican Party to continue to spread what, what, what Judge Ludig describes as the clearest and gravest threat to our democracy. Well, well, first of all, I mean, this is really a hell of a story, and that is a hell of a quote from uh, Judge Ludig, who, uh, as Mike said, is um, very well known in conservative legal circles and uh, and very, very well respected and measures his words. And so when he says this is a clear and present danger, people ought to pay attention. And, uh, you know, the fact is that this is ongoing. And what I think is interesting about this story is that it, it reminds us that this coup is an ongoing coup, that, yes, it's preposterous that you're talking about decertifying the election, but this is feeding those doubts and it is laying the groundwork for future action. And also it is providing more oxygen to this, this vast network of uh, grifters, charlatan, con men and demagogues who continue to push these big lies. So all of these things
things are important to understand. And again, for your, for your listeners, you know, if if you if you spend any time in this alternative reality of the right, this is a very big deal. Here in Wisconsin, you have a Republican candidate for governor who is running very explicitly with Donald Trump's personal encouragement um, on the platform of decertifying the election here in Wisconsin, despite the fact that there is no evidence whatsoever. So um, whatever has been happening uh, since uh, January 6th, you have these folks who are escalating it. Uh, they have no sense of shame whatsoever. They um, are getting encouragement from Mar-a-Lago. And this is becoming, I think, the, the, uh, the new litmus test for many Republicans. And I do think that it poses a real danger going forward in undermining confidence in elections. I don't think it's overstated at all. Um, I want to read what you report about what's happening in Wisconsin, Mike. Um, Mr. Eastman wrote a memo, and Mr. Epstein, that's Boris Epstein, sent an email late last year to the main legislator pushing a decertification bill in Wisconsin, laying out a legal theory to justify the action. Mr. Eastman met last month with Robin Voss, the Speaker of the State Assembly, and activists working across the country, a meeting that was reported earlier by the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Mr. Voss has maintained that the legislature has no pathway to decertification in line with the guidance of its own lawyers. I mean, this is what's amazing is that these these movements, Mike, are extrajudicial even in the states where they're happening. Who's providing the legal architecture? Well, well, it's Eastman. But I, I think that when we look at this, we have to think about two things. What if this work had gone in in the year leading up to the 2020 election? Mm -hmm. How much more successful would Trump had been? And because it, we, we walk so close to the edge, I think that you have to think, well, if they had just done more work on the front end, they may have been more successful on the back end. Well, that's Judge Ludic's point, that this is, this is an advance of 2024, no. and this is a ploy by Trump or whoever he does. It's an interesting word to use, his designee. And do you think that if the election is close, after state legislatures have been indoctrinated with this stuff from Eastman, that they are going to easily certify the elections and that the post-election period will be seamless? I think that, that I mean, as we've, we've said here, it is not only does it undermine the public's confidence in the election, but it puts the political situation in place for something in 2024 to be much easier to contest. And I think that that public confidence in the elections is one thing, but to actually upend the, uh, the election process in a m greater way than 2020 is even scarier.